Amen. The weapons. Let's turn there. I want to. I want to read that to you. Let's turn over. Amen. I want you to turn over to Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Chapter ten, starting with verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. God does not want you to war after the flesh. This is a spiritual walk. Flesh cannot please God. Flesh will never win the battle. Never win the war. Only you can do that in the Spirit. And this is how. For, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They're not human. Amen? They're supernatural. And it talks about weapons. It talks about war. And it talks about warfare. And this is how you win the battle. Every battle. Then it goes on to say, But mighty through God. Through who? Through God. For what reason? To the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. The devil has set up strongholds. Amen. To defeat God's people. A stronghold is just a roadblock. It can be fear, it can be doubt, it can be confusion, it can be laziness, it can be a lot of things, amen, that he puts there as a stronghold. He can put jealousy there as a stronghold. You can't go too far when you're jealous of somebody in the church, somebody in the, in the family. You won't get to the mountaintop. You hear what I'm telling you? Jealousy, the Bible says, has many roots. And it's a root of bitterness. It turns into bitterness. And thereby, the Bible says, many are defiled. Yes. It'll defile you. Being a Christian, you'll be defiled. That makes you ineffective. Mm -hmm. That makes you weaker than you need to be. It makes you vulnerable to defeat by the enemy if you let it take root. Alright, let's move on. Casting down. You must cast down these imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every, listen, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Boy, that's a mouthful. But let's take it apart for a minute. There's so much here. This will either make or break you as a Christian. If you ignore this kind of passage, this kind of Scripture, it will be to your own defeat. Because it puts it, it puts it on us as Christians. You have to do this. Through the power of Christ, you have to cast down, rebuke, resist the enemy. Those voices that attack your mind to make you fearful, doubtful, or this can't happen, or that's not going to be, oh, you know, all those woes. That's all negative. That brings depression. It brings fear and doubt into your heart and mind. And that's where the, the enemy comes in and just roosts right there. Gets his claws in your mind. Because you see this is you're casting down every imagination. We have, we have great imaginations, don't we? We need to use our imagination for the things of God. Amen. Amen. And not let the devil run roughshod over our imaginations. Because he's always giving you thoughts. Always planting seed, trying to plant a seed in your mind. Because that's where the battle is, in the mind. That's where fear comes from. That's where worry comes from. That's where jealousy comes from. A lot of things come from the mind. And if we entertain it without casting it down, then it enters into the heart. And then it defiles us. <clears throat> come on, somebody. So the battle is in the mind. Amen? So we have to what? Cast down those imaginations. Those jealous thoughts of people. Those thoughts of envy and strife and malice, as the Bible calls them. These are all negative things about people, about the body of Christ. I want you to think about that for a minute. That stops and hinders relationships. It stops and hinders the Spirit of God from running free in the congregation because it's a hindrance. It hinders... The Lord, if you're if you're if you got jealousy in your heart and you got envy in your heart for somebody, or you're gossiping about somebody, then that hinders the work of God. Everybody suffers because of it. 
People need to get along. As Christians, we know the world acts like that. We used to act like that. Hopefully you still don't. We used to act like that. That used to be us. And it should have been back then, but not now. Because it hinders the work of God. It cuts it short. Imagine what could happen if we're all in one mind and one accord. We see what happened in the book of Acts. One mind and one accord. My God, the fire come. The power come. The anointing come. To break and destroy the yokes in people's lives. But if we keep nitpicking at one another, we keep doing all these other things and not tearing down these strongholds, then they got a stronghold on us. And because of that, we're bound. Our mind is bound. We're not free to love right. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. We're not free to love right. We're not free to have compassion right. We're not right in giving our mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I know I've touched a nerve now. Oh, Pastor Joe stopped preaching a long time ago. This is Holy Ghost. Hey! Mm, cast down them imaginations before they knock you down. Before they, you conquer them before they conquer you. Casting down imagination and what? Every high thing. High thing that exalted itself. Who, 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 who does that but the devil? He's in high places. And he, and he comes as an angel of light. He's a deceiver. And if you ain't where you need to be in Christ, he'll deceive you. You, you think it's God when it's the devil. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even know the will of God for their life. Or they're running from it. Mm. We should know the purpose that God has for us. We should know the will of God for our life and then pursue it. And I'm talking mainly in ministry. A lot of us have ministry, birth in our soul, in our very heart and lives, and we ignore it. And we continue on our way in defeat. Because I ain't never seen anybody walk in victory that resisted the things of God in their life. That refused to tear down these imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. See, you have the knowledge of God. Yes. Not just from what you hear in this pulpit every week, but hopefully from what you read in your Bible, what you, what you see on TV or radio, Christian-wise. You're getting the knowledge, all right? But do you have the wisdom and understanding to go along with the knowledge? Knowledge is not enough. To know something is knowledge. Now what do you do with that knowledge? You have to act it out. You act it out. And we're talking here about the knowledge of God. There's no greater knowledge in all the world. To know God. Ooh, and the Bible says even if you lack knowledge, if any man lack knowledge, let him call upon the Lord and then he will hold nothing back because you have a desire. Not just to know things. You want to know them so you know how to operate in them. Amen. That's why. Listen, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't operate in it properly or you abuse the knowledge, then what good is it? God wants you to walk in the Spirit. That's why He said earlier, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That's why Paul said we need to crucify the flesh. Yes. You have to crucify on a daily basis. Sometimes it's moment by moment, decision by decision. Come on. Yes. Person by person. We have to crucify the flesh. And most people don't like to crucify. It hurts to crucify the flesh. We'd rather give in to our flesh. Say what we want to say, do what we want to do, hurt who we want to hurt. They had it coming. You see, that's, that's the devil. That's carnality. That's not God whatsoever. Well, I, I think most people, I don't know about your Bible, you have to check it, but most people rip that page out where it says, turn the other cheek. <laughs> Is it still in your Bible? <laughs> you mind looking for me? Is it still there? All right. Turn the other cheek. Walk the extra mile. Say, well, I ain't walking with that, man. Walk the extra mile. Go out of your way, in other words. Mm -hmm. Amen. Preferring others over yourself. Woo! I didn't listen to look at me like, well, you crazy? I didn't write this. I'm just delivering the mail. Come on, he wrote it. It's his word. 
And he expects us to live by it. And if you expect to have a mountaintop experience, I mean a blessing, I mean walk in victory, and stop being so defeated all the time or whatever, if that's you, man, you got to do this right. You got to do. You got to yield and surrender to God. Amen. Bringing. All right, listen. Itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. My, 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 my. That's a sermon in itself. Mm, think about that. Let's break it down. Come on, look. Again, it lies as he was you. You have to bring into captivity. In other words, you've got to arrest your own mind. Mm -hmm. You've got to train your mind to think right. Because our mind is trained from a child to the time we got saved to do the opposite. To do whatever we want, say whatever we want, you know, we're, we're taught by our parents, good or bad. We're taught by television. We're taught by school. We're taught by everything. That ain't really proper in many cases. And then all of a sudden now we got to change our mind. Not easy, is it? That's where you got to surrender. That's where yielding comes in. That's where this verse comes in. You're either going to put it under captivity or you're going to be held captive by it. Come on into captivity. That means you have to take control of what goes in and what comes out. What goes into your ears, what goes into your eyes, and what comes out of your mouth. Because eventually it all lands up in the heart. You want to be victorious? You want to be pleasing to God? You want to be with a, a real Christian? Then you have, you have to live by the Word of God. So you got to bite your tongue a lot. you got to turn your cheek a lot. Amen. I don't mean you got to be a doormat and a floor mat for everybody to come. I'm not saying that. That's where the knowledge and wisdom comes in and discernment comes in. But you've got to be willing to act and live like a Christian with the love of God. You can tell somebody uh, something you have to tell them uh, in, a, in a negative way, we'll say, or you want to tell them off, we'll put it that way, and do it properly. Come on. You don't have to get ugly. You don't have to get sarcastic. You don't have to get mean, spirited. That's not God and Christianity. A lot of people tell me uh, often, they say, you know why I'm not a Christian? I say, oh, here it comes. Why? Because they're hypocrites. I say, well, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> a lot of them are. I said, so come and join us. What's one more hypocrite? Amen? <laughs> What's one more hypocrite? Come on. No, here's the problem. There's nothing wrong with Christianity. Not a thing wrong with Christianity. Christians are a problem. The weak ones. The ones that refuse to yield. The ones that walk in the flesh. They give Christianity a bad name. The ones that are inconsistent in their walk with God. I call them roller coaster Christians. Up one day and down the next. Come on, there's the problem. There ain't nothing wrong with Christianity. If we all acted like Christ wants us to, and put on the mind of Christ, and live like Christ wants us to, act like Christ wants us to, speak like Christ wants us to, and listen, we all fall short from here to you. But we should be working on it. Amen? We, we, we're a diamond in the rough. But we